Hi guys, um, so today in the video we're going to be looking at how heart rate is regulated in the body. So the things that we need to know is the intrinsic and extrinsic mechanisms that maintain our heart rate. We also need to know the sequence of excitation of the heart muscle. So how does the heart contract? So the first thing, the, the heart is this amazing structure in the body that doesn't need any external stimulus in order to maintain its regular rhythm. Instead, it has this, these intrinsic factors that help maintain normal heartbeat. So the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node send signals to the cardiac tissue in order to contract. And the order in which this happens is like this. So the sinoatrial node generates nerve impulses that travel through the heart wall, causing the atria to contract. There's then about a 0.1 second delay when the signal reaches the AV node. So the reason for this delay is it's to make sure that the atria is fully empty of blood and the ventricles are filled with blood before they contract so that they can push blood to where it needs to be, either to the lungs or to the body. The AV node then generates nerve impulses that travel through the septum and cause the ventricles to contract. So that's what pushes the blood out of the heart to the lungs and to the body. So without neural or hormonal stimulation, the, uh, sorry, the intrinsic heart rate averages 100 beats per minute. But then that raises the question, why is our resting heart rate not 100 beats per minute for everyone? Why do we have different resting heart rates? So this is where extrinsic regulation of heart rate comes in. So the heart is also regulated by external signals coming from two branches of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. The parasympathetic system is connected to the heart via the vagus nerve and the sympathetic um, system is connected to the heart via the uh, sympathetic cardiac nerve. And these can be seen on the left on the diagram. So the vagus nerve has a depressant effect on the heart, which decreases heart rate. So the main responsibility of the parasympathetic system is to slow heart rate down. Okay, What the, this vagal stimulation does is it causes us to have a lower resting heart rate than 100 beats per minute. And with periods of extended endurance training, that can get as low as 20 to 30 beats per minute. The vagus nerve also decreases the force of each contraction of the heart muscle. So it pushes less blood out with each contraction. The sympathetic system has the opposite effect. It's responsible for increasing heart rate. It's also responsible for increasing the force at which the heart muscle contracts. So it can push more blood with each contraction. So this diagram here represents heart rate during exercise. So as exercise begins, the initial increasing heart rate is the absence of vagal tone. So heart rate begins to increase back to its normal internal rhythm of 100 beats per minute. Any further increases beyond 100 beats per minute are stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. So speeding up heart rate. The third method of extrinsic regulation comes from the endocrine system. Now we learn about the endocrine system in more detail in the HL unit later. Adrenaline is released from the adrenal glands, which increases heart rate, and it also increases the force of contraction. But just be aware that adrenaline has a number of other functions to do with the fight or flight response, such as increasing glycogen and lipid breakdown and redistributing blood to the skeletal muscles. So now that you've watched the video, have a go at answering this exam question. Good luck, guys.